All right, music fans, welcome back. Harmless Dave here talking about real stuff, real music, real life, real ridiculous government policies and doing so in real time for two out of 67 people just like you and just like me. Maybe three on a good day, all right? Um, before I get going, uh, Revolution Saints, here they are. Eagle Flight. Great album. I've been promoting it. Uh, Dean's a buddy. He's a good guy. Uh, Joel Hoekstra plays some great guitar on this. And the amazing Jeff Pilsen, who probably shares none of my political views, is uh, playing bass guitar on this. So um, just in case someone says, hey, he was talking about you, Jeff, in a positive way. Uh, Jeff, you don't have to be affiliated with me, brother. Uh, you're a great bass player. Jeff Pilsen, by the way, is still in Foreigner and uh, doing a fine job on the road with Foreigner, as they say, farewell. Um, it's her last tour. Yeah. Um, and yes, I don't think Mick Jones is at any of the shows. He might be coming out for like 10 minutes. They might wheel him out and then wheel him back in. It's kind of like the time I met Brian Wilson. All right. Very similar. They wheel him out and then they wheel him back in. So, um, this article really ticks me off. Um, not the article itself, but the fact that this information comes out two plus years later and the rock media spent a good bunch of their, you know, clickbait capital on making Dean Castronovo uh, look like he fell off the wagon and he was having these problems again with certain substances because he was in so much pain. The doctor said, you need to take this while we wait. Now, what are we waiting for? So the article starts off in a harmless fashion. Dean Castronovo recalls Jonathan Cain's advice during his painful journey stint. Now, uh, you might click on that thinking that uh, Dean is sad to be in Journey. It's painful to be back in Journey. It might have been. It might have been. With all the drama, it might have been painful. But that's not what this is about. But it's great clickbait. I've got to learn to write better clickbait titles for my videos. So instead of like two or three out of 67, I might get four. I might be Sarasota Tim and get like 6,000 to every 67. Anyway, it's that's I'm just belly aching about nothing at this point. Um, <laughs> it's not going to change anything. Um, so here's the important part of the story. Dean Castronovo, the drummer of Journey, recently shared his experiences with back problems during his time with the band. He discussed his initial struggles with getting surgery and how he eventually found relief through a medical facility where he underwent a procedure. The drummer said, being on the road so close to 35 years, uh, stuff starts to take its toll. Stuff starts to weigh up, weigh down. He says, I'm getting older and stuff. Yeah, everybody's getting older, Dean. I noticed about two and a half years ago, I was really having pain. And due to COVID, I couldn't get surgery, okay? Now, typically I say the thing here, but for those of you who are new to the channel, I am just gonna say it. It says, due to COVID, I couldn't get surgery. I mean, I would get it scheduled and they would cancel it. And then I'd schedule it again and they'd cancel it again. So here's the sentence that kind of made my blood boil. I was prescribed pain medication so I could live with the pain because I couldn't get the surgery because of COVID and the lockdowns. So what did the rock media do to Dean Castronovo during this time frame? Well, it, it appears that he's taking stuff again and you know, he had this issue back in 2015, and Dean, brother, I don't mean to bring this up again, but I 
need to add context to this. So Dean got over that stuff, freed himself, by the way, through a relationship with Jesus Christ and help from his family, and doing the things that people do when they want to get rid of addictions in their life. It's not easy. And nobody these days has any compassion on anyone, right? They like to bring up the past. Well, this is clickbait. Dean fell off the wagon again. Let's put these articles out there. And this is ridiculous. So because of government policies, ridiculous, asinine government policies, Dean Castronovo was suffering with back pain because he couldn't get surgery. You know, but you could go in there. You wanted to get four boosters and, you know, a quart of remdesivir. You could go, you could do that. You could go to any hospital and they'd put you right on the protocol. But hey, you know, I need a cancer treatment. Nope, sorry, we can't do that right now. Or my back really hurts. Well, here's what we're going to do. All right, we can't do the surgery because COVID, right? So you can um, take these pain meds. And when it gets out there that you're taking these pain meds again, the media will torch you because you're not supposed to take that stuff anymore, Dean. <laughs> Even though the doctor said, hey, take this because they're not going to be able to do the surgery. This is, this is outrageous, okay? This is nuts. By the way, Dean was supposed to play with the band not this past year, but the prior year on New Year's Eve. He tested positive for the thing. He was perfectly fine. Tested positive for the thing and missed the entire gig. Had to sit in his hotel room. Oh, he had to, he had to quarantine. He had to shelter in place. Oh, because if he went outside, you know, the world would be filled with floating particles just going everywhere. And then he'd put the entire population, especially grandma, who's in a nursing home in New York State. She was put in a nursing home with all the other gran grannies, right? So none of it made any sense. And as time goes on and you look back at what it was and what they did and how they did it, and how fear just paralyzed the entire population around the world, not just here in the United States, but pretty much around the world. So Dean misses what could have been a really cool gig. His drum tech filled in for him. Um, that was the gig where the guys at CNN got drunk, and one of the guys said, oh, it's not, not Journey without Steve Perry. <laughs> It was great. It was I called the I did a video. It was called Drunk CNN. You should look it up. It's It's one of my greatest hits, all-time best. Yeah. So, um the article goes on, the drummer who had been dealing with the pain for years declared how he found out about this new facility. Uh it's called BioSpine and Jonathan Kane recommended that he check it out. So, and get this. Uh Dean lives in Oregon and he flew to Orlando, okay? He couldn't get anything done in Oregon, but he went to the free state of Florida, specifically in Orlando, got in, had the consultation, and immediately had the procedure. He had the procedure September 23rd, and man, within three weeks, he was up and playing again. It was unbelievable. Recovery was really simple. I had some physical therapy, and within a month, I was playing my first show back with Journey. It was so good to be off of pain medication, and finally, just be great again, to be able to play without that shearing pain down my legs. He says, man, that was torture. The drummer had to go uh, or undergo two spinal surgeries revealing the first one with a statement of departure from his former band, The Dead Daisies, which he joined two years after quitting Journey in 2015. Of course, the quitting thing isn't accurate, but whatever. Just a few months before his second surgery, uh, Castronovo rejoined Journey as, and has been touring with the band ever since. So he's already had two spinal surgeries prior to this. 
And then he had the biospine procedure, and within three weeks, he was up and playing again. You know, folks, that's why when the media runs with a story that supports something salacious that happened in someone's life, and they're trying to make their life better again, and they've had success, and the media doesn't celebrate the success, they post these old photos um, of Dean when all of this stuff happened, and they they just rehash. They'll do cut and paste. They'll say, yeah, Dean Castronovo did a couple of cool things. Meanwhile, most of the music that they support these days, all of it is just, it just celebrates debauchery, and there's, there's no artistic value in about 90% of it, right? I mean, some of these bands, you just look at their names, and you're like, oh, yeah, yeah, Death Massacre. I'm just making stuff up, by the way. Yeah, uh, Death Massacre. They look, they look really cool. I want to listen to their music, you know? <laughs> but what really makes me angry about this is um, what they did to so many people. Again, old people isolated alone, in some cases dying alone, without loved ones because you know no you can't go in there and see granny you might kill her okay well granny's on her way out can i say goodbye nope because you might infect other people who are here um i i don't know how we got to this point and by the way we've never really recovered from the new normal we've gone from one demic to a new demic yeah there's a new demic that's out there right now and it involves young people who want to kind of switch teams and they're being told they have to because for some reason God screwed up when they were born and they're, they're all like Shania Twain now. They all feel like a woman. So I, I just, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it only can end when people say enough, enough. We want normalcy back, all right? But this is basically a plan, I think, to keep chaos going always in the news always you hear these stories you see little kids just losing their innocence especially during this wonderful month that we're celebrating by the way june is alzheimer's awareness month just want to put it out there in case you didn't know that i bet you probably didn't know um but i just this is just crazy how um, the media basically came after Dean Castronovo and said, oh, huh, he's fallen off the wagon. No, he couldn't get the surgery, you moron. And he was in excruciating pain. And he's had this problem now for like, I don't know, five, six years at that point. And thankfully, he got some help. Jonathan Cain gave him some good advice. And um, he's doing better. He's doing better. But any positive article about Dean Castronovo, uh, there has to be a portion of that article down below where they rehash the last 10 years of the guy's life. Rather than saying, man, this guy has really turned his life around. And, and he's doing better. And he's a great drummer. I had his friend on the other day, Eric uh, Lovery, and uh, he played on Eric's brand new album. And uh, he's like, Dean is the greatest guy. He'll do anything for you. He'll give you the shirt right off his back. And look, nobody's perfect. I'm not saying Dean Castronova is perfect. I'm not saying I'm perfect. Nobody is perfect. There was only one guy who lived on this planet who lived a perfect life, right? So Dean kind of changed his worldview a little bit and started to pay attention to that one particular guy. He's not just a guy. He's God walking in flesh. His name is Jesus Christ. Oh, no, religion and Jesus and all your... <sighs> Either it works or it doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, you've got no hope. You've got zero hope if it doesn't work. I mean, just following the principles that are outlined, Sermon on the Mount, Beatitudes, you know, parables, whatever it is, go read some and figure life out. And... The people out there who just specialize in tearing people down without knowing the full story, because it happens to me. It happens to everyone. Let me let me just be, I'm, 
rather than me whining about my own circumstances, which it's, it's actually not that problematic, only on certain days, <laughs> only on certain days. Um, but there are people that are constantly being beat up and harassed for speaking out, telling the truth about certain things. And it's not their truth. It's the truth. It's the truth. All right. There can only be one truth. If I hear, tell your truth to somebody again, I'm going to be like, no, that's not my truth. That's the truth. Anyway, Jesus said he was the truth, the way, and the life. So all three of those things. Nobody else came along and, and was bold enough and crazy enough to say those three things, but he knew it was true, so he could say it. In any event, people, I've strayed very far from the original topic, which was the way Dean Castronovo was treated by people in the media who didn't care to understand his circumstance. And no wonder why so many people in this industry just don't want to talk to anybody in the media. They just don't want to talk because um, if we can't make a clickbait video out of it, I need to make clickbait videos. How about me? I need to do that. But these guys, they're supposedly representing the rock community. Okay, well, start doing it then. Start putting stories out there that have to do with music, right? Because this is what I get now. Stay in your lane, dude. Not, and see, this is why I'm not in the lane. Because none of these people are in the lane. They stray into politics every day. Ted Nugent said that Donald Trump is Jesus Christ. Full story at 11. Okay, I'm going to click on that because that sounds like something I want to watch, right? Or, or read. <laughs> Just, And that's not really what happened, but, you know, um, I'm exaggerating to make a couple of points here. Um, look, I wish the best for Dean. Um, Dean's a good guy. There's been some stuff that's happened over the last few years. I'm glad that he's back in Journey. Um, he does a great job. He's a great drummer. Uh, and the other day, Eric uh, Lovery compared him to Ginger Baker. That is like, that is super high praise coming from a real musician who knows his stuff. So again, am I saying he's Ginger Baker? Eh, I don't know. His style is somewhat different, but he's a great drummer and he can adapt to pretty much anything. And obviously he's adapted to the way people treat him. And good thing that God forgives him because a number of people in the media don't seem like they'll ever forget or forgive or whatever it is, like their lives are so much better than his, right? It's just hypocritical. Um, but you know, this is the way you get clicks and views. Clicks and views, everybody. It's it's the new thing, even if it's not true. That's why you can just make stuff up and put it out there. If you're the president of the United States, you can say, there's no inflation. Unemployment is almost zero. Um, Russia, what did he say yesterday? Russia is uh, winning the war or losing the war with Iraq. <laughs> He thinks it's 2004 and he's still in the Senate. You know, he's just got, he needs to be retired, okay? He needs to just step aside. Um, besides, I wanna see Kamala be the president. You know why? Because it's a daily word salad. It would be so much fun to see Kamala Harris trying to be the president of the United States. I, it just, it's comedy gold. And uh, Biden does a lot for comedy too, but Kamala Harris, but you wouldn't be able to talk about her because she's a woman and she's got more melanin than you have. So you couldn't talk about her. You'd have to say she's the greatest first woman president in the history of the world. This is the greatest thing for the United States. So oh, all girls want to look up to her. <laughs> and if you know how she succeeded in politics out in California, yeah, that's the way the culture is going right now. This is why they want little kids exposed to the worst possible things. So yeah, um, I went full crazy on this video, full political crazy. Um, Revolution Saints, Eagle Flight, check it out. Modern Retro Radio, 
definitely modern retro fm.com been listening to it a lot uh because i'm on there i say a few things now and then um they've recorded my voice so you can get freaked out and hear me on the radio again which i don't know how many years it's been like over a decade since uh i was on a radio station and so i'm uh I'm pretty fortunate that I've met some good people and uh, they like what I do. Hopefully, if you like what I do, think about Patreon, folks. Um, I'm backing up everything on this channel on another platform just because. I just, you know, it, it, there may be a time where the plug gets pulled and uh, I'm just sitting here. And so, yeah, I've got a backup plan. In fact, you can check me out over on the other platform. Uh, it starts with R and ends in U-M-B-L-E. Yeah, and it's called uh, The Real Music Observer or just Real Music Observer. I'm not sure, but you should be able to find me over there. And for those of you who aren't uh, technologically savvy, uh, you are the people I'm worried about. <laughs> From, you know, to follow me wherever I go if I decide to go somewhere else, um, this is the problem because everybody's got everything set up and this is the only place that they're used to uh, using and uh, you give someone some new tech and they're like i don't know i like the old way this new way is weird and i'm gonna have to get used to it so that's why so many people are still on facebook as van van morrison said why are you still on facebook <laughs> hey i'm on there but i don't I, I do zero on Facebook. I use Messenger, and that's pretty much all I do. All right, um, I'm so done. You could stick a fork in me at this point. I am very done. Thanks for watching. God bless you all. God bless America. Most importantly, people, God save America. See you soon.